Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game to video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and this one is titled Rise Reanimator. It's an Asper colored reanimator deck featuring some of the new jumpstart cards, and one of them is Rise of the Dark Realms, a 9 mana mythic rare sorcery saying put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under our control. But how are we gonna cast a 9 mana sorcery? That's where Scholar of the Lost Trove comes in handy, also from Jumpstart, a 7 mana 5-5 five five Sphinx with flying, and when Scholar enters a battlefield we can cast target instant, sorcery or artifact card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, and an instant or sorcery that's cast this way is also exiled at the end of it. So the game plan of the deck is quite simple, try and fill our graveyard with as much stuff as possible, hopefully find Scholar of the Lost Trove and Rise of the Dark Realms, as well as some other creatures to reanimate, and then use one of our cheaper animation spells, either Blood for Bones or our Unburial Rites, which we can also flash back from the graveyard for 4 mana, getting back our Scholar of the Lost Trove, which then gets back our Rise of the Dark Realms, reanimating all the creatures that are in all graveyards, and then hopefully win the game from there. And then you'll notice we also have some expensive artifact creatures, the Meteor Golem and Platinum Angel, and that's because they also synergize nicely with our Scholar of the Lost Trove. Sometimes you don't get the Rise of the Dark Realms going, but instead you can just reanimate Scholar of the Lost Trove alongside one of these powerful artifacts that we can also bring back with our Scholar, and they also synergize nicely with our Thirst for Knowledge, which we'll get to in a second. And then the advantage of this build, instead of maybe a 4 color build that plays red for a card like Terror of the Peaks, which can maybe set up the one-hit KO with Rise of the Dark Realms, is that we can also hardcast all the cards in this deck, so sometimes we do get to 6 or 7 mana and we can just start hardcasting all these powerful creatures to take over the game. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got our Enablers with a Merfolk Secret Keeper that we can use to mill the top 4 cards of our library into our graveyard, and then afterwards we can play an 4 Blocker that can also be sacrificed to our Blood for Bones. And Stitcher Supplier mills the top 3 cards of our library when it enters the battlefield or dies, so we're also happy to chum block with it or sacrifice it to a Blood for Bones. And if we do sacrifice Stitcher Supplier to Blood for Bones, we will get to mill top 3 cards first before having to decide what creature to reanimate, so that can potentially improve our reanimation target as well. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Charter Course, lets us draw 2 cards, and then we can discard a card unless we've attacked with a creature this turn, so we often don't want to be attacking, so we can actively discard a card from our hand, maybe put an expensive creature in the graveyard or a Rise of the Dark Realms, or maybe just put an Unburial Rites in the graveyard so we can flash it back for 4 mana instead of having to pay 5. And then Thirst for Knowledge is kind of the upgraded version of Charter Course. We get to draw 3 cards at instant speed, and then we have to discard 2 cards unless we discard an artifact card. And even if we want to actively discard cards, we can still choose to discard multiple artifacts, so we're not limited to discarding a single artifact. If we want, we can discard an artifact and another card, or 2 artifacts, so we just have to make sure we navigate the interface properly. But this is a great way for us to fill the graveyard, make sure we keep hitting our land drops, and be able to reanimate as early as turn 4. And then at 4 mana we've got our 2 copies of Blood for Bones, and we've got 8 cheap creatures that we can sacrifice to it with a Secret Keeper and a Stitcher Supplier, which are often creatures that the opponent doesn't want to kill, because they don't want to kill the Supplier and put more stuff in our graveyard, where we can maybe mill an Unburial Rites to flashback. So often we can rely on Stitcher Supplier staying in play, so we can sacrifice it to Blood for Bones. And then, of course, Blood for Bones, also a nice one to get back with our Scholar of the Lost Trove, as we can once again maybe sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier and put more stuff in the graveyard. And Blood for Bones is also a way for us to re-enable an Enter the Battlefield ability, since we can sacrifice a creature with a powerful ETB effect and then get it back right away with the same Blood for Bones, so that's also an interaction that can come up. And then at 5 mana, Unburial Rites, which we can often play for 4 mana if we happen to mill it or discard it earlier. Then taking a look at our reanimation targets, we've got two copies of Massacre Worm, a 6-5 that when it enters the battlefield gives all the opponent's creatures minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn, and whenever a creature the opponent controls dies, that player loses 2 life. So this is great against a horde of zombies from Field of the Dead decks, as well as against the Goblin decks and other various small creature decks, and can sometimes even win the game on the spot. Then we've got two copies of Dream Trawler, the other white card besides the flashback on Unburial Rites, a 6 mana 3 5 Sphinx with Flying and Lifelink, and whenever we draw a card, Dream Trawler gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, so that also synergizes nicely with Thirst for Knowledge and Charter Course. We can even play Thirst at instant speed to pump up our Dream Trawler, so we can attack first, make sure the opponent 
and doesn't have any instant speed removal to force us to tamp down the dream trawler and then still get in for a lot of damage and then whenever dream trawler attacks we also get to draw a card so it usually attacks as a five powered lifelink creature if we also count our draw step and then we can also discard a card at instant speed to give a dream trawler hexproof until end of turn but then we do have to tap it so this is also potentially a discard outlet sometimes we do reanimate a dream trawler on turn four or turn five but then we can set up an even bigger play by discarding a whole bunch of creatures from our hand and setting up a big rise of the dark realms so it is nice that dream trawler also functions as a discard outlet besides a win condition so dream trawler is very useful against burn decks as it can gain us a bunch of life back and it's also great against spot removal heavy decks as a creature that's much more difficult for the opponent to kill and then we also have the full playset of scholar of the lost trove besides comboing with rise of the dark realms we can also just use it to get back another reanimation spell from the graveyard and get back a second powerful creature maybe loop multiple scholar of the lost troves that way and eventually end up getting back an artifact or another draw spell like thirst or charter course and then it can also get back our artifacts from the graveyard. We've got two copies of Meteor Golem, a 7 mana 3 3, that when it enters the battlefield can destroy target and online permanent and opponent controls. So that gives us access to a bit of removal. Also nice with Blood for Bones, as we can sacrifice it and bring it back to destroy another non land permanent. And then we've got two copies of Platinum Angel, a 7 mana 4 4 flyer that says we can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Sometimes we do end up milling a few too many cards in our deck, especially if we bring back multiple Stitcher suppliers. So we can end up with an empty library, so Platinum Angel prevents us from losing the game that way. And some decks just don't have a lot of removal since they're so combo oriented. So if you can land an early Platinum Angel, they don't have a way of winning the game. Thinking of the Song of Creation combo decks or Treasure Hunt, for example. And then we've got our four copies of Arise of the Dark Realms. Might seem like four copies is a bit much, but with so many ways of discarding it between the Thirst for Knowledge and Shard Cores, we can usually get rid of it if it's stuck in our hands. And then a mana base, only 22 lands, which might seem like a low number when we have a deck with so many expensive cards, but our deck really only needs to get up to four or five mana to pull off the combo. And then since we do have so many draw effects and we often end up discarding our spells instead of our lands, we'll end up with enough lands to even hard cast or six or seven mana creatures without too many problems. And I chose the basic island to be of the mill theme from Jumpstart and the swamp from the reanimator theme. And then we've got all 12 shock lands with Watery Grave, our Godless Shrine and Hallowed Fountain. Then the full four copies of Giant Catacomb, since we are a blue-black deck at its core. And then two more Isolated Chapel and Glacial Fortress to round out the mana base. So we've got 12 white sources to flash back our Unburial Rites on turn four. So that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? It's not perfect, but it does have potential. I'll try it. The Thirst needs to find some expensive creatures to reanimate. And drawing a Charter Course is nice. Facing Godless Shrine into Chapel. Maybe a Black White Sacrifice deck as we see turn to Priest. Ooh, Massacre Worm, that's gonna be a nice one to bring back. So, yeah, let's Charter Course. And then. I maybe don't have to show them the worm yet, since I can discard it end of turn with a thirst for knowledge. So let's discard maybe the Umburial Rites, so I can play it on turn 4 if needed. And then turn 3, thirst for knowledge, turn 4, Rites, at the very least can get back a Massacre Worm. Which I imagine is going to be pretty decent. So I'll pass. Opponent is keeping a priest so they can activate it in response to a reanimated creature here. Cruel Selbrant joins the fun. Of course, ideally, I can find a Sphinx of a Lost Trove to combo with Rise. Opponent doesn't use a priest. All right, well, those are some juicy targets. So I can discard Scholar and Massacre Worm, but then I won't have Rise of the Dark Realms in my graveyard yet. I don't currently have another way of discarding it. 
So that's the downside of not discarding Rise earlier. Yeah, let's decline and then discard Worm and probably Scholar. And then we'll get back to Worm for now. Next turn I can maybe on Burial Rites get back Scholar, casting my Thirst for Knowledge, which can help me discard some more stuff, hopefully find another Scholar, and then we'll be in good shape. So your opponent can let the Worm come back and then activate Priest. They're gonna decide to sack a bunch of stuff first, so the Worm doesn't deal too damage to them for each creature that dies. Although they might still use a Priest in response to the trigger. Nope, they're gonna use a Priest now. So I guess they were just worried about taking damage from the Worm. But that does mean I'll get to keep the Worm here, which is nice. Maybe they have a 3 mana instant to kill Worm, they don't. Innocent blood makes me sacrifice Worm, fair enough. And this looks like a Call of the Death Dweller getting back a few creatures, maybe. Although they can only get back one thing. It's gonna be a Tithe Taker for now. Alright, so... I don't think this bothers me too much. So let's Unburial Rites get back... Sphinx. And then we get to cast... I could Unburial Rites again, getting back Massacre Worm, but I think I'm gonna Thirst instead. And then... Decline, can discard Rise, and another Scholar. And then next turn I can reanimate Scholar and get back all the opponent's creatures as well. Fifth land untapped. Can they maybe escape Strider here? They need one more card in Graveyard. Could be a reason not to block the Tithe Taker. Because I kind of want to get back the opponent's creatures here. Alright, it's going to be a Call of the Death Dweller getting back Celebrant instead. Fair enough. Now I'm happy to block. And now it's finally time for the Wombo Combo. Right, get back Scholar. Get back Rise of the Dark Realms. And there we go. And we can even attack for five. Alright, so we should be in decent shape. Another Wost Rider. Can just hard cast my Platinum Angel or Meteor Golem next turn. Just to be safe. Yeah, let's just play the Angel, just so nothing can go wrong. And, uh... Yeah, opponent sees it riding on the wall and explodes. Sweet. So it wasn't the most impressive or early Rise of the Dark Realms, but still pretty cool that we got back the opponent's creatures as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what do I think of this hand? I do need to draw third land, and I also need to find white mana to flash back on burial rites. But it's got potential, so I'm gonna keep... And I think I'll play this tapped for now. I do get punished if I draw a charter course. But otherwise, I'm probably better off saving myself to damage. Alright, I did find third land and white mana, so that's great. I didn't mill anything too useful. 
Although I will be able to thirst and then discard the rights and worm and then turn four reanimate worm, which is pretty decent against goblins. And we'll leave the supplier on defense in case of a hasty three mana goblin. I'm happy to chum block if they attack, but they're gonna stay back. Alright, Massacre Worm and Rights. And then this uh, Massacre Worm is just meant as a speed bump. Make sure we don't get Muxus the next turn. They could have sacrificed their two goblins in response, so they wouldn't have lost uh, four life here. There's a Chieftain. Probably gonna start by playing Stitcher Suppliers, see what we mill. Alright, there's Scholar, so I can reanimate the Scholar, which can get back Thirsts. I could also Blood for Bone sacking the Massacre Worm and bring it back right away. Let's start by attacking with both. Two more Unburial Rites. Um, yeah, let's just... Play Blood for Bones, Sacking Supplier, hope to hit Rise of the Dark Realms here. Another Scholar. Alright, so we'll bring back Scholar. Put Supplier in hand. And Scholar can get back... I guess another reanimation spell and burial rites. Get back another scholar. And then with the last scholar, I could blood for bones once again to get back scholar, but it doesn't accomplish a whole lot here. So I guess we'll just go for the thirst now. Could have also gone for the blood for bones sacking worm and putting it back to kill chieftain, but I don't care too much if chieftain stays in play. And then we'll discard Massacre Worm and Unburial Rites is fine. But the opponent can play Muxus, Cranko is not that scary. And they're facing 10 power in the air, so yeah, that's game. Goblins, definitely winnable matchup, especially if we find a Massacre Worm. Sometimes they can't beat a Platinum Angel unless they've got Gem Palm Incinerator, which not all versions have. So yeah, on to the next one. Alright, I'm on the draw. This hand is pretty nice if I can find a Chart Course or Thirst. Since we'll be able to discard Scholar and Rise. For now, mill myself for four. And there's an Unburial Rites waiting for me. And at least one Scholar to bring back, which can also flash back Chart Course to maybe set up a second reanimation attempt opponent on some sort of multicolor ramp deck. Another explorer. Alright, so don't have anything going on this turn. Drawn from dreams. Interesting. There's a field of the dead at long last. Get back scholar. And cast a chart, of course. Alright, so next turn I can play Supplier. And if I mill a Rites I can cast it. Or I can discard the Rites, but there's nothing to get back. Probably discard another Scholar. 
I suppose if I'm worried about, like, escape shifts making a lethal army of zombies, I should have discarded Platinum Angel so I can reanimate it and potentially survive an army of zombies. Opponent passes, so I guess it's just double stitcher supplier, try and set up this Rise of the Dark Realms. Found another Unburial Rite, alright. No Rise in the Graveyard to get back. I could flash back Unburial Rite, but then there's nothing to get back for Scholar outside of Meter Golem, which doesn't look too impressive. So let's just play another Supplier for now. And now I can get back a Thirst for Knowledge as well. Get in for five. Happy to chum block with the suppliers. I'm fine if my opponent plays a sweeper. It's gonna be Brazen Borrower Bouncing Secret Keeper. Sure. And Invent for six mana. Okay. Gets I see. Awakening plus rallying roar. That's the combo here. Well, that was unexpected to say the least. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw facing Lurus, so presumably the Spirit Dancer deck. In which case, the card I want to find is Platinum Angel, because they often don't have any removal to get rid of that card. So if we can find Platinum Angel, we can essentially win the game if we reanimate it in time. This hand doesn't really do that all that well. And there's Angel, so I'll keep. And then probably bottom Dream Trawler. And then try and find some cheap creature so I can use Blood for Bones to reanimate Angel. Opponents on the blue white version, which is probably the more popular one nowadays. Do they have a turn to Spirit Dancer? Nope, Staggering Insights. So, not the most aggressive start, luckily. Should buy us enough time to set up the Angel reanimation. Alright, any reason not to discard Angel so I don't show it to them? I think I should still just discard it. Although that might change their play and how aggressive they are to try and close out the game before I can get it back. On down to Vanguard. Alright, so I still don't have a creature to uh, sacrifice to my Blood for Bones. So let's chart, of course, before playing my lands. That way if I find one of my one mana creatures, I can play them depending on which one we draw. And then discard Scholar. And then I can play Supplier. And then next turn I can sacrifice Supplier, bring back Scholar, which also gets back Platinum Angel. If I had more time, I could chart, of course, discarding Rice first, but there might not be a need for it. Opponent puts Lurus in hands, sure. Let's sacrifice Supplier. Could have maybe attacked for one first, but doesn't matter here. Get back Scholar. And put Supplier in my hands. 
And then I guess I have another reanimation spell I can cast, so I can get back the rights. Which can get back another scholar. And then I can get back my angel. Sounds good. And yeah, opponent cannot beat Platinum Angel, and that's game over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. Lead with Watery Grave, since that also plays my Stitcher Supplier. And then we're just hoping to find a Scholar of the Lost Trove to go with this Rise of the Dark Realms. Another card I briefly considered is Zombie Infestation as a way of emptying my hands. Because sometimes we do get stuck with too many cards that I don't have enough time to uh, discard all of them to set up my Arise. So that's definitely a card worth considering as well. Uh, I guess Electromancer is your opponent playing counter spells, maybe. Yeah, I think I'll still pass. Because if they counter the Thirst, they maybe won't be able to counter my Humburial Rites. I see the truth, so probably an Arc Light Phoenix deck. So, what am I hoping to hit with Thirst besides my uh, Scholar? I guess that's the main one. Shock finishes off Secret Keeper to potentially prevent a Blood for Bones from happening. Alright, there's Scholar, so we'll decline. And then if I want to cast Scholar, I need to uh, also discard the rights so I can flash it back. And there we go, turn 4 Scholar, casting a Rise of the Dark Realms. Don't have the fullest of graveyards, but this is good enough for me. And then next turn we can try again. Fill the graveyard with Secret Keeper, Blood for Bones can get another creature back. Let's start here. Hit for 11. Massacre Worm lines up pretty well against Young Pyromancer as well. And then I'll Thirst main phase to hit my land drop. Did not hit my land drop, but I can discard Rise and another Massacre Worm maybe. And yeah, Double Massacre Worm is probably going to be game here. Double Charter Course discards Arclight Phoenix. Get back Scholar, and we can play another Rise, getting back Massacre Worm. And that should be game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand looks reasonable. Don't have a reanimation spell in hand yet, but between the Secret Keeper, Finding, Unburial Rites and Charter Course, I've got high hopes. Opponent on a Sacrifice deck with turn 1 Call of Familiar. Still illegal and historic. Alright, so no reanimation spell just yet, but at least a rise in the graveyard in case we find Scholar of the Lost Trove. Dreadhorde Butcher hurts, so I might want to play it slow here and play Secret Keeper to block. Play a Timed Godless Shrine. 
so I can block the Butcher and the next turn chart, of course. Alright, there's the Unburial Rites. So I can set up a turn 4 Rites here. So, is that what I want to be doing? Kind of want to get back Massacre Worm. Although, if I discard rights, I can potentially still mill something exciting with the Secret Keeper. If we find Scholar, that would be nice. So I think I do still discard rights. And then I'll mill myself with Secret Keeper. Found a bunch of Stitcher Suppliers. Alright. So I don't know if I'm gonna go for the rights on turn 4 yet, or if I wait an extra turn. Maybe Chart, of course, getting back Massacre Worm. Take it from there. They can activate Priests. And still hit me with a Butcher. So the damage is adding up. And getting back a Platinum Angel here is not gonna do it with a Priest in play. Call the Death Dweller too. So yeah, I might be dead next turn. Not sure if there's anything I can do. If I play Secret Keeper, my opponent can still activate Priest to make me sacrifice it. I lose two, two more from Scorpion, and then the Butcher is probably a lethal. If I bring back Platinum Angel, that's not going to do it in the face of Priests. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just dead on board. My best bet is that her opponent somehow doesn't kill me. And I get to... cast a Thirst for Knowledge end of turn, bring back Massacre Worm, but that's a long shot. Bonus empty handed. Thanks with all. Not a priest. So I do get to block the butcher, but I'm still taking four. And then they can sacrifice butcher and scorpion to the priest, and that's a ton more damage. Otherwise, Massacre Worm would have been pretty juicy. Alright, we're on the play with a um, bit of a slower draw. No one mana enablers. But uh, Thirst for Knowledge is a great way to set up our turn 4, turn 5 reanimation spells, so I'll keep. On the draw, this might not be a keep, but on the play, I think we can afford to keep a slightly slower hand. Facing Temple of Mystery, most likely a ramp deck. So the first Thirst can discard maybe the two creatures, and the second one can discard Rise. Maybe we'll have drawn our scholar by then. Ooh, cutthroats are opponent on a Sultai flash deck. Okay. So the green for uh, Nightpack Ambusher, the black for the 3-2 uh, that draws cards. Counter spells are typically pretty tough for us to beat. So I guess we'll discard Scholar and Rise. This might be a game where I just need to hard cast my threats, so keeping Dream Trawler and Massacre Worm in hand makes sense.
Don't think I'm chomping the cutthroat just yet. I'll take four. And we'll discard Scholar and the Platinum Angel. And then this turn I can flash back right. They have to counter it, and then next turn I can just hard cast a Dream Trawler or flash back another right. Right. Opponent may be digging for a counter spell. It's gonna be a sabotage. So now I'm fine shun blocking the cutthroats, given a chance. Opponent needs essentially two more counter spells here, which they may or may not have. Opponent passes. I think this turn I tap out for Dream Trawler. If they only have one counter spell, they might let this resolve because they don't want me to flash back on burial rights. And then I can make some progress with the Dream Trawler in the meantime. As opposed to flashing back the rights, getting it countered, and then being a turn behind on Dream Trawler. Or maybe they're out of counter spells and I could have resolved uh, my combo here. The Dream Trawler should buy us quite a bit of time as well. Spectral Sailor draws a card. Second so Chump Cutthroat. Dream Trawler holds off Spectral Sailor. Still plenty of cards in library, so I'm not afraid of decking, which can sometimes be a concern in this deck. Alright, so step one attack with the Dream Trawler. Could also decide to cast Thirst for Knowledge, which will pump up the Dream Trawler. And I will have the lands to still flash back rights. And I shouldn't be dead to the Cutthroats on the way back. Yeah, I don't hate it. And then we'll discard. Probably just only the Platinum Angel now. Do I need another Massacre Worm in the graveyard? I guess I'm probably not gonna have time to cast it, so sure. Can still give this Hex Proof a response, it's already attacking. Discard Godless Shrine. So maybe that was a reason to only discard one card if I needed to use Dream Trawler a bunch. Alright, so I expect this to get countered, but that's fine. Get back Scholar. All right, never mind, it resolves. Maybe they have a negate for a rise. All right, looks like they have nothing at all. Sweet. Well, I guess we win the game now. So yeah, this uh, game also kind of showcased the importance of being able to hard cast some of our win conditions like Dream Trawler, which can be an alternate win condition, apply a bit of pressure, combos nicely with our thirst. And then once we do get the opportunity to go for the combo, it's usually game over. 
Sweet. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.